This is my intro music. Welcome to the video. I hope you like it lots, so don't forget to subscribe and click the thumbs up button. Now let's react. Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to another episode of An Anthropologist Watches Amberlynn Read. And today we are watching Amber's most recent video, which is almost 24 hours old. Um, what I ate today off track takeout edition. Like this, like there isn't a takeout edition vlog. I guess there was the um, Trader Joe's edition, I suppose. Uh, yeah. So this is Amber telling us what she eats on a day when she's off track. I don't. I'm trying to remember how many on track days she's actually shared with us because I don't feel like there's been many, and I feel like she's constantly posting off track videos. So I like at this point when she posts like an off track eating day and it's, it's just like it's not really off track though is it because you're constantly off track so if you're always off track and you're never on track then it's just normal eating and the way that she eats in this kind of tells us how why she's as big as she is to be perfectly honest i do remember catching bits and pieces of this from the kicking geese live and it's just it's the kind of content that a certain group of people would enjoy watching when they enjoy watching larger women eat food. That was a really long way of explaining something. Yeah, Lucy, in order to be off track, you have to be on track sometimes. I do remember asking people how, how long they thought that food tracker journal was going to last, and uh, we never saw it again. So for those of you that said zero, you win. So I hope hope you enjoy your, your winnings. And that... that just I don't know I'm not gonna lie to you guys it's getting really hard and it has been hard for a while to do reactions to Amberlynn's content because it's so low quality content it's such non-tent that there's only so many times I can I can point out that she's in her lie zone and there's only so many times that I mean I can continuously do it that's that's not the point but after a while even that becomes boring and repetitive to everyone involved and I don't know if this is a tactic that she's trying to do or she's trying to like bore the reactors I know we're sort of kind of being punished because she's mad at the reaction community but it's like it's not a great idea because her content is not good anyway. Like if Amber started her channel today and she was trying to be a lifestyle vlogger today, she would get no traction whatsoever. And it's because there are so many other lifestyle vloggers to watch out there who are not Amber and who actually put effort into filming to doing something interesting throughout the day to being consistent with their content to interacting with their audience in a positive kind of way her stuff is so low effort low quality low content low it's just the only reason why amber pulls the numbers that she pulls and is able to stay as infamous as she is is because she already has this reputation if you just threw amber out there as a nobody onto youtube she would crash and burn and literally the only reason why she hasn't is because well uh, frankly people kind of sort of hate watch on top of you know i'm just here for the for the train ride you know i mean because like for example um you guys will see it the the members have already seen the video, but the regular subscribers will see it around six o'clock tonight. I I can create content like dark anthropology and three principles of dark anthropology and how they relate to Anne Berlin. I can do that because there's so much content out there. And there are a lot of people who are interested in that topic. I think if I did it like over and over and over and over again, people would get tired and quit watching. And that's understandable. But like I can I can bounce back and forth from that. I can bounce back and forth from other creators. I have the freedom to create other content and react to other things. Amber just has Amber. She's never branched her brand out. She's never tried to develop any kind of personality for the channel. She's stuck. And since she refuses to even put like this much effort into what she considers her job, or at least what she tells us she considers her job, her channel is suffering. 
And yeah, she's still raking in cash. Don't get me wrong. She probably isn't feeling it too much in her pocketbook, but she's, I, I'm always impressed that she is able to maintain the viewership that she has outside of like people outside of uh, the Amberverse. You know, she can't really bring in new people because it doesn't take too long for her to show her ass and for everybody to get offended. So I'm just always impressed year to year to year that she's even still able to make videos and get pushed out there by YouTube. So I have her, I have Amber sped up to time and a quarter as per usual. And before we jump in too far, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to my members. You guys rock. Thank you to everybody who's going to hit the thumbs up button. And yeah. Hello, hello, welcome Hi. to a new vlog. So this vlog is gonna be like a normal vlog, but I'm also gonna add in here what I ate today. So this is a completely off track day. Again, you have to be on track for this to be off track. So this is just a typical day of eating for Amber. Because starting tomorrow, I'm getting mm -hmm. back on track and I will show you guys what that looks like more so. Cause this is gonna be like a little bit of a series. We'll see how it goes. But no, it won't. She's already failed. The way she looked off to the side there, she's already failed. But I figured I would show you guys like how I'm eating when I yeah. literally am not thinking about my weight whatsoever. Like, when are you ever thinking about your weight when you're eating? I don't, I'm not saying she doesn't think about her weight because how could you not? What I'm saying is when she's eating, I don't think she thinks about her weight. If she did, she wouldn't make the food choices she makes. At all. I thought it would be more authentic to do that instead of just like jumping into a weight loss series because I do want you guys to see like how it looks truly off track for me. You're always off track. And you looking over here trying to make shit up tells me that you're off track and you're just trying to spin this. So we're gonna have that and we're also gonna have just like a regular vlog. So let's get into it. All right, so I ordered food. Food. So here is my first meal. So I got five guys actually. So Ugh. going back to the Amber is trolling and someone on here said, uh, Megan says Amber should not be choosing to have an off track day. This is a choice. This did not happen. She was not in a situation where there was no other option besides five guys. She opened the app, she chose five guys, and she picked this food out herself. This was her making a choice to eat this food on camera for views. This is not off track. If it is off track, it's not off track. It's just not. There, there's way too much conscious decision making here for this to be off track. It's performative is what I'm trying to say. So I got there a regular size Cajun fry, which I never finished the fries. I never finished the burger either, which. If I don't see like at least five X's in the chat. I'll definitely show you guys that. So for the cheeseburger, um, I got mayo, jalapeno, onion. So that's everything that's on there. I mean, it sounds good. I just, I, I can, I can smell that burger now. Five Guys is really popular in the area I drive for. It tastes so good. And then Does for the it? drink, I just got a Diet Coke. So when my Uber, Wait. um, I got mayo, jalapeno, onion. So that's everything that's on there. Mmm. She's cutting out where she's taking the bites. So she's cutting out the feeder where she's feeding herself. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> so... That's interesting. That's interesting that she cut that there. It, was it did something happen and she needed to cut it or is she cutting it because I've called her out for it so many times that she's trying to hide it now? It's all right, girl. We got we got you documented. It's fine. It tastes so good. And then for the drink, I just got a Diet Coke. So when my Uber... That Diet Coke's totally going to balance out all of the grease and the fat from that Five Guys. I'm sure Five Guys tastes delicious because, you know, fat, sugar, salt. But it doesn't mean it's good for you. It is certainly not the best way to start your day. Delivered the food. Um, I was expecting a guy, and it was actually my hair. Tastes so good. Sorry. And then for the drink, I just got a Diet Coke. Uh -huh. So when my Uber delivered the food, um, I was expecting a guy, and it was actually my original Uber driver's wife. It's because he broke his leg. My mind is blown. You order Uber so frequently that you know who your driver is. I have three people in my area that I recognize the name of when I deliver to them. 
I don't think any of the three of them could pick me up, pick me out of a line out, a line up, could pick me out from a line up. Okay. And I deliver fairly frequently to them. The fact that she has taken the time to, well, this is, is this the guy who she like slowly caressed the hands of when he handed her her food that one time? I would remember that. That would, that would stick with me. <laughs> I would remember that. That would be creepy enough that I would not ever want to deliver to this place, to this woman again. Well, she knows who his wife is now, apparently. Though she's off in her story creation zone, so she might be making this shit up. I'm just blown away. This is so giving off whale vibes, the movie The Whale. So, because wasn't one of the major characters in The Whale a delivery guy? who delivered so frequently that they had kind of created a repertoire through the door. Like, he never opened the door. He just talked to the guy through the door. So, this is I, this feels like another scene from The Whale that she's ripping off here. I was like, oh my god! I don't know about y'all, but I'm a 30% tipper when it's on Uber. Like, I don't believe that. I really don't. Like, I just have that automatically set. It's not an option. I, I, I don't know how Uber works. DoorDash, it's not an option. They give you three automatic options to pick from, and it's like four fifty, five something, and then like the ridiculous tip that nobody picks. And then you can add, you can make it your own. You can tip your own amount if you want, a custom tip. There's no automatic choice for that. And even then, the higher end tip is not 30%. <sighs> no, she does not do contactless deliveries, Nicole. She likes to touch hands with her delivery driver. She likes to have him handed to her. I do wonder if her apartments makes her do that. Like some of the apartments I deliver to, um, they won't let the drivers into the actual like living area where the actual apartments are. They, they'll have a shelf or something for us to deliver to, or they'll make the, the people come down and get the deliveries themselves, mainly because they don't want us wandering around in the hallways because you never know. But for some reason, that made me feel really bad, so I tipped a little extra. All right, so I'm going to eat this. I'm probably going to watch, like, Grey's Anatomy. Was that story just so that she could tell us how altruistic she was and how much she tips? And was this just a, was this story just a chance for her? I'm thinking out loud. I Okay. I think this story is not real. I think she's borrowed this from something kind of like The Whale. Or she's heard someone else tell this story. And I think she reused this story in order to demonstrate to the audience how kind and giving and what an empath she is. Because, oh, my usual driver is injured and his wife had to come do his deliveries. That is weird to begin with. I'm not saying people don't do that, but a lot of times the wife would just have her own account. Like... When I first started driving, my partner and I well, was during the pandemic. And so my partner and I both had an account, but we were both driving. Like he would drive sometimes on the weekends and I was driving pretty regularly. I would, we never used each other's account. Like if one of us wanted to go out jashing, they just, we just use our own account. We still don't, you know, he still technically has an account, even though I'm pretty sure it's dormant at this point. So for her, that, particular part of the story is sus anyway especially since in terms of cert, uh, in the tos if they somehow caught you doing that like caught your wife driving on your account you could get deactivated that that's grounds for deactivation so why would you risk it you know so that part of the story i'm not saying it can't happen and i'm not saying people don't do it i'm just saying there's a lot of risk when there doesn't need to be for it to happen, I guess. I don't know. Um, so there's that. And then the whole, like, I just automatically tip 30%. I just have it set for that. I don't think you can do that. Again, I don't drive for Uber because it's a hot mess, but um, in my area. But you can't do it on DoorDash, which maybe that's why she doesn't use DoorDash. I don't know. And I sure as hell don't for a minute believe that she tips 30 to 40% because that's insane. Most people wouldn't do that. And 
It's just, and I don't believe she tips that well. I just don't think she's a good tipper. She doesn't come off to me as a person who's a good tipper. Or something, and then I'll show you guys what I don't finish because every time I get five guys, I never finish my food. Y'all, I tell you, they I swear to God, this looks like a bag full of worms. Give you so many fries. I always just empty them in the bag, but that is all the fries I have left. Like, it's just so wasteful, but it's a lot, and I'm over it. It's so wasteful. No, it's not. Stop it. And then here's how much of the burger that I Okay, so you didn't eat two whole bites of that burger? Such self-control. Much self-control. Wow. But I've left, so I'm finished with this. Uh -huh. Okay, you guys, so I'm- You literally have two bites of that hamburger left. You want, you want me to believe you didn't finish the hamburger? The fries, I can see. The hamburger? Really? She really does think we're stupid. I'm actually going to my grandma's today. I think we're going to play some cards. So I'm getting ready for that. Got to wear my sunglasses on my forehead. So I have everything that I need. Say hello me to me from the back. Do my typical. I don't know if she's been watching. What is that chick's name on TikTok? She's one of the fat acceptance girls. Crap, I almost had her name. Dang it. I hate that. Anyway, she's she's one of the fat acceptance chicks and she's always being like super condescending and super snotty and she's always talking like this. Um, crap, I keep almost getting her name. I've noticed that Amber started talking like her lately and I don't know if she's actually talking like her or if she's just picking it up from other people because it's clearly a way of talking. It's not it's it's not special to one individual. Um, but I, I've just noticed that whole like ning, 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 that she's been doing a lot of lately. Marissa, yes. Mar Marissa Matthews. She talks like Marissa Matthews. Nobody likes Mar Marissa Matthews. I don't think Marissa likes herself. Checks around the apartment. If you know, then you know. Because in the last video, she told us all of the little steps she has to take before she can walk out the door because you guys, she's quirky. It's her OCD. Versace, which is my all time favorite. It is the bright mm -hmm. crystal. Yeah, something about this perfume, chef's kiss. It's also grocery shopping day, so. She is so goddamn weird. This is how I get my. Okay, this is weird, okay? I will give her this. Groceries back into my apartment. I actually am buying off of Amazon a specific like grocery cart for people who live in apartments. They're like 15 bucks. You can buy them at the, the actual grocery store. Because I'm tired of using my suitcase. I don't know, I'm I know, otherwise it takes. <laughs> I look like apple slaw. No, no, no. Go back. Just no. Nah, that's not what I wanted either. <laughs> oh, it's tuna salad. I was wondering what the hell that was. Doofity. And here I put coffee. He's a pretty kitty. Oh. Guys, don't feed your cats animal people food. It's it's bad for them. <laughs> Unless you're feeding them like legitimately raw meat. <laughs> No, mom, turn it around. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's an Iron Man moment. That is a vape. The argument, the, the conversation in Kicking Geese's channel was, is that a vape or not? And that's clearly a vape. It's bright yellow. Autumn Holly says, I think I've seen her use the brand Lost Mary's. It was in another video, but my partner vapes the same brand and the packages look identical. Is it pineapple? Is, are you the one that said it's pineapple flavored? The red has to be on top. Uh, is the red on top? Upside down? What do you mean the red Why? has to be on top? Okay, it's recording. I like that. Yeah. Oh crap, you know what? We could go back. We can be nosy nosy bitches. I have been lost Mary's, I believe. I moved on to... Oh, so these are Delta products? Okay, it's recording. I like that. Yeah. Mom. <laughs> Sorry. Face. <laughs> 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 Oh, there we go. There's no way Mama Lynn doesn't know how this works. I just want to get like a like B roll, card. so I'm not gonna like say no, no. I'm just getting some B roll, so I'm going to sit here and explain it to everyone. Because we needed B roll of her shuffling, apparently. Oh, I, I thought you knew how to shuffle, Amber. I'm editing that out. I do. Oh, you can't you can't show that you have a, some type of character flaw that you can shuffle perfect. No, my character flaw is my fat. Okay. Yes, that is the only character flaw Amber has. I like the reserved pillow in the back here. You guys say pillow or pillow? It's probably actually pillow, but I think I say pillow. 
It's a family thing you wouldn't understand. I like the lamp. Gremlin definitely has a lot of like Native American gitch going on. Who's winning? God. Amberlynn is. Amberlynn! Amber, Amber can't lose. Have you guys ever noticed that? It doesn't matter what it is. It, it literally doesn't matter what it is. Amber has to win. I don't think Amber's ever shared a moment where she wasn't the winner. I'm not saying she's not winning. It's just so important to her to tell people when she is winning. So, what's going on here? Did <laughs> All right, you guys. So I just went grocery shopping. I'm probably not shopping. I didn't even know Rice Aroni had individual things like that. I'm not surprised. So we got the skinny pop popcorn, you guys, because you know it's skinny. It'll make it'll make you skinny. I don't know what the hell this is, but it's 250 calories. Tapatio, some kind of orange drink, family size something cereal. It looks like. Uh, what else we got going on? These are actually really good. I get the white cheddar rice cakes. Um, Sprite. Uh, I can't tell if this is an Insta meal or... Oh, that's bacon. That's her microwave bacon. I have no idea what that is. That's something else. She swore that there was produce down here in the bottom, but I see bologna. That's not really produce. I'm guessing this is butter... Whatever it is, it's 190 calories per serving. Um, that reminds me, I've got mandarin oranges I need to eat. I'm not going to do a haul, but if you guys want to look. There's some meat. But remember, guys, she doesn't like meat. Shells. Canned goods. I'm not going to lie, these look like dog treats. And they might be. She does have a dog. Delicious florets, so there's broccoli. She knows there's other vegetables on the planet besides broccoli, right? Like, she knows that there's other kinds of vegetables you can eat besides broccoli. That personally taste better, in my opinion. Like, hell, even broccolini tastes better than broccoli. And somebody was telling me that there's something called, like, baby broccoli. And I kind of want to know what it is now. I kind of want to see if I can find it, because apparently it tastes really, really good. Oh, is that Special K? Is that what that was? That box of Special K? All of, like, the really healthy stuff is down below, I promise. Is it? You have broccoli. I got a lot of produce in there. And some bread, and your chicken sausages, and instant mashed potatoes. That's not produce. I'm not lying, I promise. Like, okay. I'm probably not going to do a haul, but if you guys want to look. It is so free. There's a part where she goes, I'm not going to lie, I promise. And then she, just, she looks, she goes immediately into her lie zone. Like, she doesn't even try to shy away from it. She's just like, and she's smirking the whole time she does it. So freaking heavy but full of grocery and then i'll just lay it down i promise you this just makes life so much easier why does she have to promise us i remember watching during the panini there was a i, I don't i haven't watched him in forever but there was a guy who was an english teacher who lived in china and during lockdown so he wasn't doing anything really but he was it was his turn to go to the grocery store and he was doing that. He was taking his um, luggage like this to go to the grocery store because he only had like one day to buy basically a month's worth of groceries. And uh, he met up with one of his friends and they both were like rolling along their roller luggage to fill it up with the groceries so they could roll it all home because there was no more mass transit or anything. They had to walk both ways and it was crazy. And I was like, actually, that's pretty smart. <laughs> and then when I'm done putting away my groceries, Rarity Gray thinks that this is her new home. So that card game home. you saw me playing at my grandma's house is called Crazy B. And that game has been in the family for I can't even tell you how long. Because I was wondering. And every single time I tell someone about that game, they're like, what? I've never heard of it. It's very similar to Phase 10. Like, it's so crazy to be sitting there. Phase 10 takes forever to play. With my grandma and my mom, we play that game. And I just go back and I think to when I was 18. And we were all sitting there playing that game together. And now I'm 33 and we're doing it. Like the way that we all have changed and have grown into like better people. Because of a card game? I mean, 
Weird as shit's happen, but okay. And we all have such good relationships together. Like, I love it. It's a beautiful thing. My mom's boyfriend was also there. So out of the four of us, my grandma won. Me and my grandma were neck and neck for the win, but she got it. So I'm about to have two of these Uncrustables. It's peanut butter and grape jelly sandwich. They're so good. These were literally made for babies. And they're like the absolute worst. Also, the amount of money that you spent on these Uncrustables... You could have probably bought all of the ingredients to make PB&J two or three times over. Like that nasty ass, less than a dollar white bread, peanut butter. You could even have splurged on name brand Smucker's grape jello, jelly, sorry, and still been able to make like 19 million of these sandwiches yourself. All you have to do is cut the crust off after you've smeared the bread with the stuff like this this first off these are made for children and secondly this is like ultimate laziness you know a proper pb and j with the crust off is it's too much work apparently also it's not in this cute little round shape with the little ruffles cut into the side i know i'm, I'm freaking out over the crustables but it's just the it's just it's I'm not saying an adult can't buy Uncrustables, because an adult could. Obviously, it's your money. Do what you want. Eat what you want, I guess. It's all of these little things that add up to Amber that make this ridiculous. It's Amber, and this is just like, this is very Amber-coded. I could make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich myself, but I'd rather eat this uber-processed POS instead and eat two of them in their individual packages because making the PB&J just is so much effort. And a sun-kissed orange zero sugar. Okay, you guys, so it is time for my next meal. I got Taco Bell. I got an order of their cinnamon twist. I hate those things. I hate them. They cut the shit out of your mouth and they don't even taste that good. My hair is all up in it. Cinnamon twist. I actually have not had these since I was probably like a teenager from what I can remember. So let's try one. Mmm. It literally, the texture reminds me of freeze dried candy. I got one taco. It is just the um, nacho taco one. I don't know. It's the nacho cheese taco shell, which is what I prefer. And then I got a black bean burrito with, I think I asked for like French fries and onion on the inside. Why? Look at that face. Like, I'm totally being... She's she's trolling. I'm not saying she didn't order a black bean burrito with whatever she just said is inside. I think she did it full well knowing that when she told us all about it, we were all going to go, uh, what? So, and I did. So she got it. She wins. I took a bite of my food and I forgot. I'm also drinking some water. So. I some. Good for you. I'm drinking water too unsuccessfully that's my water for the day i don't usually get drinks when i order from uber i mean i have before it has happened but it's not really something i do it kind of just like gives me the creeps a little bit you guys wonder if what no explanation for that one i was going to say do you guys wonder if the uber driver this time was the other uber driver's wife again but then she said Ordering drinks from Uber creeps her out a bit, and it short-circuited my brain. Why? You've never had a problem with it before. Like, literally, you've never mentioned having an issue getting drinks with Uber before. So... Lizzie, exactly. She's gotten only drinks delivered. Like, remember when she used to order from Sonic all the time because she liked their ice? Don't get me wrong, I like a Sonic drink, but... I'm gonna go to Sonic. <laughs> I'm not, it's Sonic. It's meant to be cheap. Like, why would you spend 20 freaking dollars to have a cup full of ice delivered? All right, you guys. So I am getting ready to go to bed. I'm done eating for the night. Mm -hmm. And if I have anything to drink, it'll be out of this water bottle here. So I kind of enjoyed reading off some questions that you guys left in my comment section in my last video. So I want to do that again. Did you though? You're staring herself down. All right, her nose is all red. Her cheeks are kind of flushed. The one eye is bigger than the other. Yeah. 
She's relaxed. Maybe she felt like she had to get relaxed in order to deal with the comments from the comment section. Again, for you guys at the end of this one, it was actually Life Plus Cindy who I saw do this. I love her videos personally. I think they're just so, I don't know, something super like comforting about them. I Who's Life Plus Cindy? I remember her mentioning that when I was watching this through Kicking Geese. Fun with herbs and get ready with me. Restocking my herbs and making herbal bath oil, getting ready with me to go out. Maybe we'll watch Life with Cindy. Trying Colourpop palettes, treating myself to a new bag, plus chicken wings for dinner. Meet Arthur. It's Arthur the dog. Hello, Arthur. How are you? Mini Midnight Hour Clothing Haul. So she's just a lifestyle vlogger? <laughs> I met someone and I'm going on a date. I'm not sure I'm ready. Fair. <laughs> so far, I like her thumbnails. They're funny. Another mundane vlog. Fair. I used to get Ipsy. I kind of miss getting Ipsy. I'm not going to lie. Ooh, a tarot reading. Maybe we'll watch that one. I know this one's a little bit far back because it's three weeks old, but I'm always here for a good tarot reading. Hint, hint, kicking geese. I know you're listening. All right, we got three minutes of this left. Let's go. I relate to her in so many different ways. But anyways, I saw her do this at the end of her vlogs. I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to steal that from her. And I was just afraid to like say her name in my last video because like I don't want people to go hate on her. That's just what people do. Girl, no offense or anything, but you ain't all that in a bag of chips. Like you're... You simply mentioning the name of another influencer is not enough for that influencer to get hate just because the, their name came out of your mouth. Like, especially an influencer who's probably bigger than you. But it's it's nice of you to show us how humble you are from time to time. This is also... Remember when she was going through that phase where she was constantly mentioning H3H3 because she was trying to get their attention? That's That's what this is. This is her trying to get uh life plus cindy's attention by mentioning her on on her and trying to make it sound humble like oh i just didn't want to get you pulled into my drama even though i relate to you on so many levels and it's just we've seen her do this so so many times and it's never worked out i don't know why she keeps doing it it's very much a notice me senpai moment Amber is influential, just not in the way she thinks she is. Like, I don't think Amber really understands. Like, if, she, if Amber says something is bad, people are going to assume it's good. If Amber says something is good, they're going to assume it's bad. That's not the influence she thinks she has. And she does seem to think she has some kind of power over her audience where that if she recognizes someone or... Like recently with the reactor thing, she was kind of bad mouthing Jordy in the hopes that people would go to Jordy and kind of like, I don't know, ruin his day over the the bullshit. And I'm sure some people did. And I hate Oops. it. I'm pretty sure some people did because it's just kind of the ecosystem. But were they sent there from Amber's channel? I don't know. That one I highly doubt. You know? So there's a lot of people amber influenced to lose weight because they don't want to be amber okay so let's get into some of the questions so Please what let's. i do is i go to my youtube studio i go to the comments and then i go to just contains questions so anything with a question mark gets put she, she's so excited that she learned how to do this in the last video you know she's been on air for 10 years and she figured out how to do something that like they literally walk you through now when you open a channel in here first question is how much delta eight you doing over there <laughs> they actually said girly pop how much delta eight you doing over there with like a laughing cry emoji um quite a bit <laughs> this is her trying to be like the it girl this is her moment where she's trying to be sassy and cute and hip with the kids you know the kids who do the delta eights this is it it's her flexing in a weird kind of way where she's like um quite a bit i'm always doing the delta eight you know 
whoever she's trying to court right now, this is must be something that they are into. And so she's trying to like signal to them that she's okay with it. I'm not saying she's not vaping because obviously she's relaxed on something. Baked Lynn over here. I'm not gonna lie. Um, last week I stopped vaping Delta 8 for like six days. And I was like, you know, this girly pop kind of misses it. So I started doing it again. For six whole days? How, how did you manage? So she also really, really wants, this is something she's been doing since she moved to Oklahoma, honestly. She really, really, really wants to have some kind of addiction that she can overcome on camera. And she originally started it with trying um, with the alcohol that she was drinking. She was drinking a lot of buzz balls and that shit. And then she was like, I just have to stop drinking kind of a thing. Um, and she's tried to do it again. She's tried to do it before with the vaping and the Delta 8 where she she tries to play it up like she's got some kind of like, well, like addictive dependence on these substances. And I'm not saying that you that a person cannot have that. I'm not I'm not saying that. It's just with Amber, it's so fake feeling and performative. And it's almost like it's like she's forcing herself to do it just so that three months from now, if that long, she could be like, I just realized it wasn't good for me. So I decided to overcome it. And and then she wants applause for getting over some kind of flaw some kind of addiction when all we really want is for her to get over her food addiction but see if she makes these fake if she makes these fake issues up for herself that she can just stop doing because she's not actually dependent then it's easier because all she has to do is not vape for six days oh wow wow you know Whereas someone who has an actual dependency on something, six days is hell. Okay? So that's the difference, is what I'm trying to point out here. Yeah, Tiffany Liu drinks twice a year, brags about how she stopped drinking. Exactly. Yeah. So, and you know, talking about dark anthropology and manipulation and that kind of a thing this is just another way that amber's trying to manipulate her audience by creating these fake issues that she can later on overcome and so it makes makes her look like on camera that she's strong and independent um glitter and lasers anna does this shit too where she creates drama for herself but it's it's something that's easily overcome or something that's easily handled um it's it's just that level of thing but it makes them feel like they've done something so it's like that joke i think it's from dracula dead and loving it where they're in the asylum and the asylum head guy says give him an enema it'll give him a sense of accomplishment it's kind of like that the purchasing of an excessive amount of journals is trolling, right? Like, what the hell, lol? No, it's not trolling. I just really like writing. I like pen to paper. Very old school like that. I thought she typed everything up on her computer first and then copied from her computer into her journals. So which is it? Like, I didn't buy that story when you gave it to us the first time, and obviously it's not true because you've never mentioned the process since. Since everyone called you out on it, you haven't mentioned the process again. So I'm going to guess that's not actually whatever happened to begin with. So. What's the point of playing bingo if you don't keep up with the numbers being called? I do. Um, what? Okay, so the last question is. I think she's making a joke of the fact that she doesn't keep up with the numbers. To be fair, that guy does go pretty damn fast. Bob, yeah, exactly. I have decided to stop being outraged by it because that's what she wants. Um. But I do completely 100% understand people who are outraged by it because it, it does piss me off. Um, but the reality of the situation is, is she wants a ass pats for overcoming something traumatic and B, she wants to troll those of those of us and those of you that have actually recovered from something serious. Several people point out that she's jealous of Mama Lynn being recovered from her addictions because Amber isn't 
and Amber never has been. And the way she's going, Amber never will be. And so she's jealous of her mother because her mother has succeeded where Amber continuously fails. But by creating these little issues for herself and constantly collecting disorders like, you know, like collector cards, she can create that sense of um, accomplishment for herself that she is overcoming these things when she's really not. She's not doing anything. She's just she's just lying. She's lying to herself and then she's trying to lie to the audience and the audience can see through it. Amber, there are a whole lot of compilations of you talking about your childhood and bashing your parents. What are you talking about? You have blamed them for your problems for years. Does she think we'll forget? I actually talked to my mom about this today because a lot of people have been like, you've been bashing your parents. And I'm like, no, I haven't. And then I started feeling like, oh my gosh, have I? And that's not something I ever want to come across as doing, like ever. And my mom has seen a lot of my videos. Your mother's seen a lot of your videos, but doesn't understand how your audience reacts to random people being in your videos. Therefore, your mother was caught off guard when people started digging into her past. Part of the story does not line up. So. Also, you're in your lie zone, so I'm pretty sure your mom hasn't seen a lot of your videos. A fair share of them. And she says that everything I've ever said has just been me sharing my story and how I viewed it. I think it's crazy that like when people open up about their past. Look, you can share your story and how you viewed your story and still be bashing people like. One of the clips I shared, which was off of um, Apathetic Facts' compilation, was, I, oh, she was something about a court case. I just used a couple of clips out of that because the whole story wasn't important to the point. But she says something to the effect of, um, I was living with my parents. And of course, the way she's telling him, I was living with my parents and they were on a basically they were they were being tested to see if they could be good parents they failed by the way like i get that you're sharing your story but that's not bashing I, you know it's it's the way she said it it's the way she presented it it's the way she continued the story continuing to talk down and use down speak when she was talking about her dad like but she does this a lot with her partners and she does it to her mom nowadays too. She uses a lot of down speak. She uses a lot of blame talk when she speaks to them or about them or with them. And I don't think she understands how it sounds. I don't think she understands how it sounds when she's talking like that in that people outside of that situation. It's like when everybody was accusing her of being, um, yeah, whatever being abusive to becky um and both her and beck were like no no and it's because from the outside you can hear it and you can see you can hear the words you can see the way she's presenting the words you can see the way becky's reacting to the words you get the full picture when you're from the outside when you're inside it's like i say with uh people that she manipulates when they're inside her sphere of influence it's really hard to see that you're being manipulated and it's the same situation here when you're in the car with her and she's down talking you because you've never had a Starbucks before, but you're trying to have a relationship with your daughter after all of these years, you probably don't register the down talk. And I think it's just a default way of talking to people that Amber has where she's just always talking to people as if they're inferior to her and she doesn't hear the negative talk and in, in her the way and the things that she says people automatically assume that it's bashing no i'm literally just sharing who i am and why i am the way i am i think a really good example of that is like my 600 pound life they always have that scene right in the beginning of it where the person who's on the show is talking about their past and like what they went through as a child and some and you're not on a chan um, an episode of my 600 pound life and you're not doing that that's not what's happening Sometimes I go into a lot of detail. Does that mean you're bashing? No, you're literally just sharing your story. Anyways, I'm gonna go though. I hope that you guys did enjoy this vlog and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Hello. Bye. Yeah, exactly, Rocky. She's called her family trailer trash. She's talked about, um, she, there's another story in the little clips that I was using, again, from Apathetic Facts, where she was talking about her, the, her parents going into the bathroom in their teeny tiny trailer to use their substance of choice 
and how you never knew how they were going to come out. And it was just like, okay. It wasn't a, I don't know. It's just the way she says the stuff. I guess that's the point. Yeah, right, Sunny. And then there was that whole thing about how, like, her dad died and she was bashing his friends and then says she lied about that. And anyway, um, let's see. Hey, hi, hello there. Welcome to me forgetting that I needed to do an outro once again. A bit better at this, I promise. So we've made it this far in the video. Go ahead and leave a go ahead and leave a taco or a burrito down in the comments section. And yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this up to this point. Um, this is part of the ongoing saga. Fortunately, it's starting to die out some, so that's good. But otherwise, there really isn't a lot to talk about in the video. So I kind of said what I was going to say, and that's the wrap up. So yeah, one last time. Aqua or Burrito, thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel. Thank you to the subscribers. Thank you to my members. Thank you to the live chats. And uh, yeah, I'll see everybody in the next one. Bye. This is my outro music. You can't copyright strike me because it's just me singing. This is my outro music. Thank you for watching. See you next time.